Hey, how's it going everyone? So this video is going to be a little bit different than my previous videos of me and Sydney on our boat Viridian. Now I am a electrical engineer and I know from experience a lot of my friends here at the marina uh, electricity and power consumption can kind of be a little bit mystifying to the average boat owner. So I figured I would share some of the things that I've learned over the years of being an electrical engineer and try to share them with the greater overall boating community. Now to kick things off for this video, I'd like to go over how to determine the power consumption of your laptop. Now this can be very important because when you think of the power draws on your boat, if you have a small or medium sized boat, Generally, your power consumption draws, your, your largest ones from a 12 volt perspective, are going to be your refrigeration system, uh, your lighting, your instruments, if you're using your instruments frequently. Um, and then, of course, since we are in the 21st century and we all uh, tend to use different gadgets, whether that's iPads for navigation, laptops for editing videos or playing video games, your phone for communication, so on and so forth all of those little electronic gadgets tend to use a lot of power and can really add up quickly. And out of all of those, the most power hungry is going to be the laptop. So for this video, I'd like to show how to determine exactly how much power your laptop is using. That way you can better balance your power consumption and ensure that you're not pulling too much power from your battery bank when you're using your laptop. Now, I just recently purchased a new laptop uh, for a couple reasons. One is to have a little bit more power and capability when it comes to rendering these videos in Adobe Premiere Pro for you all, since I really you know like doing this, filming these videos and, and um, putting them up on YouTube for you all. Uh, and then as well, I'm also an avid PC gamer, so I like to play video games on my PC and wanted something that had a little bit more capability for playing those video games. So with that, one of the most important tools to measure your laptop's power consumption is going to be Core Temp. So we go ahead and download CoreTemp. I'll put the link in the video description. You download it and install it. Now what CoreTemp does is one, it shows you what type of processor you have. So you can see here that I have an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HS processor. This is a relatively high-end processor that tends to pull more power than your average processor in a laptop, mainly because this is a gaming laptop. And what it's also going to show you is your load across all the different cores on your laptop. So this laptop has eight cores and you can see uh, right now I'm actually recording this video with OBS. So OBS does have uh, CPU draw while recording to record that video and that audio. So you can see the load here on the right and see that the processor is being used. Now currently with OBS running and recording this video, we're drawing about 15 watts of power just for the CPU. So just for the CPU, not the whole laptop. So that gives you a good perspective of how much power your laptop will draw from a CPU perspective. In this case, with me just running OBS Studio. Now, uh, you'll have to take my word for it because I can't record the screen with this software uh, without the software running. But generally when this is in a cr uh, completely idle state, the CPU pulls about two to four watts. So actually a very, very small amount of power. Now, of course, with the, uh, this laptop and any other laptop, you're also going to have power consumption from the rest of the laptop itself. For instance, if you have a spinning hard drive in your laptop, that's gonna pull power. And then as well, one of the other main um, power sinks in your laptop is going to be your display. So you can always dim the display to decrease the power consumption uh, and then increase the display brightness to uh, increase the power consumption. So in addition, many laptops also have power management systems. So this laptop here has what's called the Armory Crate. It's a piece of software designed by Asus. And what it does is it allows you to choose from different power uh, consumption um, settings here and kind of overall affect the system from a power consumption and also a performance perspective. So right now I have it in silent mode, which is the most uh, power efficient mode, but it also slightly gimps the processing and it completely turns off the uh, RTX 3060 in this laptop uh, because, you know, of course, it, it's not being used for what we're um, currently uh, doing on this laptop. Now, if I wanted a little bit of an extra performance boost, I could go ahead and put on performance, um, and you can see basically what it does is it pumps up that CPU frequency and will increase the power a little bit. So now let's go ahead and look at our core temp. So you can see our power went up slightly. This is still just recording OBS. Now we're bouncing around between 20, 
Uh, it looks like down to 19, up to 25. I saw 27 as well. So essentially what this does is when, when you adjust these settings, it will bump up the frequency, which then uses more power. Now, if I were to plug this laptop into its 20 volt, 180 watt power brick on the side, it actually would unlock this turbo mode, which uses a lot of power and really is only necessary for when I am gaming. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and put it to silent. And now we're going to do a couple of different scenarios here. Now, you do have to bear in mind that OBS is recording right now. So because OBS is recording, we are pulling about 10 to 12 watts over uh, what we would be if OBS was not recording. So uh, first up, we have just a handbrake video encoding. You do have to remember this laptop has a uh, 35 watt TDP processor, so it is generally a lot higher than an average laptop uh, TDP wattage. Most laptop processors are going to be about 15 watts, some are 25, and if you have a gaming laptop or a higher end workstation, it might be closer to 35. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick off this handbrake encoding. Uh, what this does, if you're not familiar with handbrake, it basically takes a video. In this case, this is a .mts video, and we'll re-encode it into a different encoding format uh, to a M, uh, excuse me, uh, M4V, which is similar to MP4. So this handbrake application will put the CPU at full stress, and we'll go ahead and kick that off and see what happens. So you can see immediately there the power jumps up to 55. So we are now pulling. 55 watts just on the CPU. So once you add a little bit, you know, plus or minus with the display and the rest of, of the laptop itself, we could be pulling maybe up to about 75 watts, which is quite a bit of power. Now you have to keep in mind, this is under a very, very high load. So you can see every single core there running at 100%. Generally, if you're not doing things such as video encoding, of course, you're not going to be pulling um, or putting your processor in nearly that much load. Now, if I was on my older laptop, this might say 20 watts since it was rated for a TDP of about 15 watts. So it really comes down to what your processor is. Of course, since this is a much more power hungry processor, you're going to see a lot higher numbers here. And now I actually haven't done this on video. So let's see what happens if we bump it up to performance while it's also encoding this video. So we don't see a really large increase there since the processor I think was pretty much already tapped out. And now just for fun, let me go ahead and plug in the large power brick that unlocks the turbo mode for us. So there we go. You probably hear in the background the fans are kicking up speed a little bit. Uh, we did bump up to about 57 watts there for a second. But if you look at the temperature, we are pretty maxed out on CPU temperature right now. Most CPUs tend to throttle themselves around 100 degrees Celsius. So it can we can uh, be relatively safe to say that under a 100% load situation, that the CPU is going to draw about 55 watts or so, which puts the total laptop around 75 watts if you want to give it a little bit margin of error. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, disconnect this. Now that we know the max power is going to be about 55, we can go back to just the PD charger and we can go ahead, put it back on silent and stop this video encoding. And now another common application a lot of people use for video editing is going to be Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and look at Adobe Premiere Pro and see what we can expect from a power consumption uh, when it comes to rendering a video. So I'll go ahead and close out Handbrake just to get rid of that. Um, and you can see we're kind of back down to that 15 watts. And of course, as I mentioned, it would be about four to five watts-ish without OBS running in the background. So let's go ahead and export this video here. This is, um, I believe this is episode 56 here. And we're gonna export it as H.264 and we'll just use my standard preset there. And we'll just call it sequence one so I don't have to worry about changing anything. Now Adobe Premiere Pro generally does not consume or utilize as much CPU as does Handbrake. So now, as you can see, uh, usually this video render is actually quite a bit faster. I think it's something odd's going on with the CPU right now because I'm also using OBS. But you can see our power consumption here is about 45 watts, 40 to 50 watts. So a little bit less, but still pretty close to that 55 watt number we were seeing uh, with the handbrake application. 
And now finally, let's see what happens when we just look at a YouTube video. So here we're running a YouTube video. Uh, this is uh, episode 57 here on the YouTube channel. And we have it set to 1080p, 60 frames per second. So you can see over there on the right, we're pulling about 20 to 25 watts. It's kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, but the important thing to note is, you know, as with everything else, OBS is running. So subtract a little bit from that. So probably looking at about 5 to 10 watts under a standard uh, video here on YouTube. And here we have just a general base web test. And th what this does is it will do a couple different uh, renderings in your web browser in order to determine your capabilities from a web browser perspective. This kind of simulates running a lot of different tabs at once. Maybe you have a YouTube video in the background, you know, you're doing some uh, browsing of Facebook, watching some videos here and there. So you can see the power kind of jumping around a little bit. When it's running these renders like this here on the left, that is a pretty power hungry um, uh, process. And you can see the power kind of jumping up, um, up to about you know 45 when it hits those um, more difficult renderings. And also jumps down to you know about 20 or so while transitioning between these different tests. So I would say it's relatively safe to assume that for using this under a web browsing uh, uh, use only, you're probably going to see somewhere between uh, probably about 15 to 20 watts on this CPU. So that just puts it in perspective. Now, if you have a lower end TDP CPU, of course, it's going to be a lot lower, probably down towards about the 10 or potentially even 7 watts, which is much more power efficient. Here we have it running through a couple of different map renderings and you can see we're running about 22 watts and of course subtract that you know 12 13 ish for obs and you know you're coming out uh, around 10 or so which is to be expected and here we have render rendering a couple of different just web pages and it's kind of jumping all over the place but what this does is the end result is that it gives you a really good baseline to determine how much power your laptop consumes which I think is very useful as a sailor or a boater who may or may not be running on a limited power system. So hopefully this video was somewhat helpful. I know it's not something that uh, I usually put out. It doesn't really involve sailing that much, but I just figured I'd share this with everyone and uh, hope some people find it useful for determining the power consumption of their laptop.